This past Friday was World AIDS Day. It was a day to raise awareness, honor those who have died, and also note the progress in the fight against the disease. As Dr. Tara Narula reports, millions of people living with HIV are now getting the therapy they need to stay healthy. These are all individuals who in some way, shape, or form live a life with HIV. That's 37-year-old Roscoe Boyd on an HIV awareness poster. Boyd became HIV positive in college. There was still this thing, this underlying sense of shame and worthlessness, um, of not necessarily deserving love. Boyd is on medication called antiretroviral therapy, or ART, to suppress the virus. For the last seven years now, I've been undetectable. That means there is so little of the virus in his blood, it can't be detected. It means something else, too. Being undetectable means that you cannot transmit the virus to someone else. Boyd is part of a new awareness campaign called U Equals U, or Undetectable Equals Untransmittable. Over 500 organizations in 68 countries have endorsed the campaign. This fall, the CDC agreed with the U Equals U message, writing that people who take ART daily as prescribed and achieve and maintain an undetectable viral load have effectively no risk of sexually transmitting the virus to an HIV-negative partner. The implications are huge on many fronts. Dr. Barry Zingman is medical director of the Montefiore AIDS Center in the Bronx. It adds a whole other dimension onto why taking medications is really good for them. Uh, it also adds this incredibly powerful tool that we have now to directly prevent transmission and also to help decrease stigma. Everyone can benefit from U equals U. Reducing the stigma might also improve rates of diagnosis and early treatment. This is a game changer, particularly for stable couples with an HIV positive partner. But for many at high risk for contracting HIV, using condoms and a preventive medication called PrEP may still be recommended. Dr. Tara Narula, CBS News, New York. So TV reporter Carl Schmid is living his Hollywood dreams, interviewing celebrities and enjoying life in front of the camera. But for 10 years, he kept a secret that he feared could ruin his career, until recently when he decided to face his reality head on. Here is how he is settling for more. Hi, I'm a 37-year-old HIV-positive man who's been paused for almost 10 years. In March, Carl Schmid took a leap of faith, revealing to the public his biggest secret. I never really had any set intention of making an announcement. It wasn't a thought-out, planned thing. Inspired by a photo taken of him wearing an AIDS memorial shirt, the On the Red Carpet host... I am having a grand old time up here. ...went with his gut. I looked at the picture on my phone and I went, well, hmm... Okay, and I just started writing. It all just felt right in the moment. Originally posted to the Instagram account, The AIDS Memorial, Schmidt decided to also share it. My HIV status was not a secret in my personal public life. So my friends, my family, anyone close to me, people I tried to date, they knew about it. It was just, I didn't announce it at work. Born in Australia, Schmidt comes from a close-knit family and says he never lied about his sexuality, coming out to his parents at 18. It wasn't a shock to them. His decision to get tested came after a long-distance relationship hit a bump in the road, but only he faced a new reality. My memories of the day that I found out I was HIV positive are, are pretty crystal clear in my head. I was in England at the time, and I hadn't really given it much thought because I had tested negative months prior. I walked into the Dean Street Clinic in Soho. It was a dreary, wet, cold, miserable oct early October day. Had my finger pricked, waited 15 minutes, I was called back in and I was told I was positive. And I went, okay. So they did a secondary test. I waited another 15 minutes. It's positive. It felt like a red digital countdown clock started over my head. But here's the thing, I'm me. I'm just like you. I have a big heart and I want to be loved and accepted. I'm Carl Schmid and I'm HIV positive. Wow. Carl Schmid joins me now. Thank you for being here and thank you for that courage. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was a gutsy thing to do, even in 2018 America, where the stigma attached with being HIV positive is still there. And it's one of the reasons you decided to post, right? To, to go public. Absolutely. And it's not just the stigma is still there. In 
many states in this country, if I don't disclose my HIV status to a partner, even if we have consensual sex... Are you allowed to say that? You are, are, yeah, yeah. not a naughty you word? You can't say ass. OK. okay. Well, you just did, but you're the host. <laughs> Sorry, my, say, yeah. double juicies, whatever my team double told me to say. Juices. I don't know. I'll get back to you. But if, if, <laughs> if I have consensual sex with somebody and I don't disclose my status, I can go to jail for eight years and be convicted as a felon in the United States of America. OK, and, and one of the reasons that's so extraordinary is because we're going to get to this. Even if you're HIV positive, if you're taking meds, mm -hmm. it it would register as negative, and it's, it's not contractible. We have a doctor here, um, so we'll get to that. So yes. it's not, I mean, people who don't understand HIV positive would think, well, there's a reason for that. It could be a death sentence for somebody else. No, 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 no. It's much Undetectable more Undetectable equals untransmittable. I'm here to bang it into everyone's heads. Mm -hmm. So can we just go back? So you sure. get that, that moment of positive and then another test. Oh, my God, positive again. And did, at that moment, before you knew everything, did you feel like it was a death sentence? No, I think, I think I kind of go into that survival mode is how I've described it. I think whenever anybody has dealt news, be it cancer or whatever, I think it almost becomes harder for those around us than those who are actually going through it. It was like, OK, this is what it is. Now what do I do? I do remember having to walk back across Soho Square to my office. I had to go back to work. And apart from that digital countdown clock, it, the, the immediate emotion was oh, my gosh, I've, I've let my parents down. And I think that it's hard enough to be a gay male and come out to your, to your family, but I think that most parents, uh, they find out their son is gay. The immediate... Or one of the immediate fears is, now he's going to get AIDS. And that is a byproduct of the fear campaigns, which, by the way, needed to happen to some degree back in the 80s and just 90s. To, just to we alert people to behaviour. Yeah, look, people were dropping like flies. We had, to, we had to stop this. It was very important. And part of that was to scare the poo-poo out of people. Mm -hmm. um, but the residue of that, the knock-on effect of that, is we have not had really a proper conversation since the 80s, early 90s about what it means to be HIV positive in this day and age. Yeah. And so, so many of us, so many of us have this image in their head of very ill people, sometimes handcuffed to hospital beds, people in gowns and masks, doctors and nurses who, who refused to go near them. We have this fear and this idea that that's what it is. But this, 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 hello, camera two, this is HIV positive in 2018. Wow. Take a look. Wow. All right, so there's much more to Carl's story, including his concerns about the ramifications professionally if he were to reveal this publicly. We'll have that when we come back with Carl. And we're back now with entertainment reporter Carl Schmid. He has been HIV positive for almost 10 years. Until recently, he says the stigma of the condition kept him from publicly revealing it, but now he's trying to change that. So being on TV, you got to worry, what are, what's my boss going to say? What is the public going to say? What, are, what is everyone going to say? What's happened? Well, I have to tell you, uh, the response has been phenomenal. When I let my fingers do the talking, uh, I had... There was no plan. There was, I had no idea this would go the way it did. Um, but all my colleagues at work, uh, who I work with in Los Angeles and where I work, have been fantastic. Everyone has been supportive. And it is a, a weight off my shoulders. But, you know, I get messages day in, day out, still, after all these months, of people saying, thank you so much. As, as recently as last night, and I'm sort of paraphrasing here, I got a message from someone saying, thank you so much for being a face. Uh, you give me strength like you wouldn't know. I had the closest relationship with my sister growing up. When I disclosed my status, she stopped talking to me. Her husband doesn't talk to me. And worst of all, they don't let me see my nephews. And the sister said, I wish you'd never disclosed your status to me. This stigma, people, is real. Must be and lifted. it's unnecessary. Must be lifted. Do Dr. Antonio Ur Urbina is with us now. He's, he specializes in infectious diseases at Mount Sinai. Doc, what about that? Undetectable equals untransmittable. Is right. that true? So if you take your meds every day, then what? Right, right. So that's that U equals U. So a person living with HIV 
takes their medications, drives their viral load down to undetectable, their chances of transmitting is zero. Sexually transmitting HIV is zero. And there have been recent studies that have demonstrated this. So the people, I mean, to this day, who are like, if I share a toothbrush, then my, I could get it, right? What do they need to know? By the way, interrupting, who shares toothbrushes? Well, That's a... <laughs> sometimes in a pinch. <laughs> but you're right. Yeah. Sorry, doctor. It's just absolute nonsense. And we really have to, like, forget that stigma. We all know persons living with HIV. They're our mother, our grandmothers, our brothers, our sisters, our friends. And to know that if you take your medications, you're undetectable, that you cannot transmit the virus. That's huge. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much, Doc, and thank you thank for your you. courage. All and the thank best you. thank you, all of you. Undetectable equals untransmittable. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.